good afternoon everyone so we start with the opening mantras atma tvam girijamati sahacharah prana shariram graham पूजाते विषयोपोगरचना निद्रा सधी स्थित संचार पदयो प्रदक्षिण विधि स्त्रोत्राणी सर्वा गिरो कर्म करो तदखिल शंभो तवारा धन कर चरण कृतम वार्यज कर्म जम वण नयन जम वन संवापराधम विहितम विहितम वर्वेत शमस्व जय जय श्री करुणाथे श्री महादेव शंभो जय जय श्री करुणाथे श्री महादेव शंभो सदगुरुनाथ महाराज की जय सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन सो वी हैव जस विथ हस मोस्ट ऑफ यू मस्ट बी फेमिलियर विथ हस वी हैड हर इन कपल ऑफ वीक्स अगो एंड दोज हु आर लिस्निंग टू हर फॉर द वेरी फर्स्ट टाइम जस इज अलर and a teacher of many body mind and soul modalities today her talk is on shamanism i have been her student and it has been a wonderful experience to practice shamanic journeys on my own and with her so i welcome jess to share her journey with her with us thank you jess most welcome Thank you, Hema. Always a pleasure to be with you, share the platform, and uh, with all these wonderful people here. I can see familiar places, faces all along, and I would request you to have your videos on. Believe you me, you look much prettier, much more handsome than you think. So, putting your videos on and a little bit of smile definitely makes a difference. it really yes so it really gets the environment going and it's a spiral that we all get to because it's so infectious the moment somebody sees a video on the other person thinks oh i can do it too and if you see a little smile on it's very natural to smile back think of yourself as babies or if you have babies around it's very natural to smile at that 6 month old it's so adorable i don't know what happens when we grow up so let's keep the baby alive in us and keep our cameras on and so the smile what i have for you today before that um i would want you to get into um let's say a couple of deep normal breaths not very really deep breaths so i will give you a bit of music in the background and i want you to take a breath in for the count of 3 hold to the count of 3 release to the count of 3 and then hold empty to the count of 3 and we will do it with ease there is no compulsion we have had a lifetime of making efforts of struggling of working hard today in the talk there is nothing like that we are not making any efforts shamanism is actually the path of the least resistance it's the path of no efforts and you would know by the end of it why am i saying that 
So right now, just relax yourself if you want, just take your specs off. I will give you the rattle sound and we will all begin to breathe in to the three, hold to three, out to three, and empty to three, okay? Let's do that. Okay, so let's just breathe in, two, three, hold, two, three, release, two, three, empty, two, three, one more, two, three, hold, two, three, out, two, three, empty, two, three, last time, two, three, hold, two, three, out, two, three, empty, two, three. And keeping your eyes closed, let's just check our body from head to toe, starting from the top of the head, if you feel any part of your body has any tension, any stiffness, tightness, just slowly and lovingly just say the word ease to yourself in the mind. So starting with the top of the head, if there is a heaviness, just say ease. Moving to your forehead. to your eyebrows, to the eyes, the cheek. We store a lot of tension in our jaws. So see if you have a bit of that and just say ease. Shoulders, few of us are carrying the weight of the world on the shoulders. Just say ease if you feel that. Lovingly embracing your spine, ease. Your throat and chest, ease. Your tummy and lower abdomen, ease. The most ignored area, of our body, the sit bone. Knees. Our thighs and legs. Knees. The soles of the feet. The big toe, the little toe, and all the toes in between. Knees. And with this ease, you can come back and open your eyes. Do you feel the difference before and after? Do you feel something? Yeah. So shamanism actually, as I said, is is a path of no efforts. It's one of the ancient healing practices. But even before I get there, I want you to see this video. And as you see this video, enjoy the video, the essence that it brings. It's one of my all time favorite videos. I think it encompasses humanity as a whole. Uh, I would like to hear your viewpoints after the video. So here is the video for you.
จอจอนายเลยครับนายเลยปะจัดไปเอาสั่งมาเร็วต่ออะไรยูโน่ไอฮะมัสต์ฟ์ชอว์นดิสวิดีโอโอเวอร์ฮันดรัดไทม์สอินเดอะคอร์เปอเรทส์เอเวนทิลเดทเวนไอวอชดิสวิดีโอไอฮะฟ์ทิออร์สเวลลิงอัพในมาไอส์เอเวนทิลเดทแต่นั่นคือมาเอ็กซ์เพรสชั่นของไอฉันอยากได้ยินว่าคุณเห็นในวิดีโอคุณเห็นในวิดีโอเราได้มีบางแชร์ในนี้ได้มีบางแชร์ในนี้Anybody, anyone, please unmute yourself and come. G. Uh, it shows. It shows that uh, if you do a act of humanity, it pays always your life. Yeah, beautiful. It always pays in life. Yes. Yes, Nazia. I heard. I saw that you unmuted. Yeah. Uh, it's very emotional, like a lot of emotions everywhere, uh, all kind of emotions, you know, lower to higher, you know, taking you from the sadness to, you know, satisfaction and a lot of things. I, I see a lot of emotions, just emotions. It does. It doesn't it talk, talk about, demonstrate the full spectrum of human emotions. Yes, a lot of emotions. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Yes, Rimaji, please. Rimaji, you have to start yeah. your video. Hi. I'm sorry, I'm on move, and uh, if I start okay. my video, my audio goes off. So I'm making this a, just a choice right now. No so problem. Me, video uh, is good. Thanks. Audio is good. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was a very powerful expression of the power of intent. Right. I saw some sort of intent in those eyes when he looked up. I think that's what stayed with me towards the end. Yeah. Just that. Thank you. Thank you, and that's so powerful, right? When we intend ourselves to do something, just that mere intent speaks a lot. Any, anyone else? Let's have one more sharing before we move. So yes. I'll I'll come in. Please. So there were two, three things. One is the joy of giving, or uh, not expecting anything in return, not asking why, when, and then is you never forget who helped you. 
They are the two important things you never forget. Yeah. Yes, and, and somehow that's always there, you know, even if we forget in life, but a part of us always remembers who helped us. <clears throat> Sorry, all, of, all the people who got here. So my intention... Uh, there is, is one more share. Yes, Ritu, please go in. Yeah, please. so you know that I would be sharing. You unmuted yourself, so I came to know. I did. Actually, I felt lots of helplessness, you know, around human beings in some or the other point of uh, in, uh, in their life. At some point, everybody is helpless. And when we see the extended help, uh, I mean, it's like you you get your life back. So I, I feel that. And definitely like what, what the deeds you have done in past are you, you are going to, you know, that will come back to you. Uh, that is also there. But then uh, uh, what I found that helplessness in the eyes of that boy also. And then again, that girl was in the same state. Like the the life coming to the full circle, what you see, and then again, it comes back to you. Like everybody has to go through all these kinds of emotions in one or the other point in, in their life. So Thank that's you. what I felt. Thank you. And what you're saying is, um, I think, perfect for uh, sharing before moving ahead, because uh, <laughs> rightly, we go through emotions and experiences which may be a little different than the others, but the shared pain of humanity is the same. And so is the shared joy. The birth of a child universally brings tears. The death of a child universally brings uh, tears of sadness. That brings tears of joy. So some experiences are shared across humanity. But what we do with those experiences can actually be very different. So here, I think that boy also had a choice. He could become either an I or an E. He could either become bitter or he could become better. In the ancient healing practice that I will be speaking on today, we talk about that how each moment is a healing moment. As you went through this short video of three minutes, you also got involved in the emotions. Somebody may have thought of their father, somebody may have thought of how they came up uh, with their hard work, somebody may have thought of a friend, or somebody may have just been intently watching the video. And whatever be the case, there is something that moved inside of us, which wasn't the case 10 minutes ago. So this moment, like all the other moments of life, represented an opportunity for us to heal, for us to soothe our wounds and become better. If we aware this opportunity we get on here, if we didn't, we stay where we are or at times people choose to be bitter. I have a friend, uh, uh, he was going through a point of terrible marriage. I am unmarried and I was telling him about different things that I have picked up. I have learned in my relationships as a psychologist when I deal with people. And he said, when you will go through it, then you will know. And I'm like, ouch, you really don't mean that, right? You don't want your friends to go through bitter experiences or experiences that are likely to make them bitter. But the point is because he was going through so much of pain and in the process, he was becoming bitter. All he passed on to me was that bitterness. So looking at all the experiences of life, we are presented with moments wherein we can be healed and better, or we can stay wounded and bitter. I was telling somebody the other day that if you don't take care of your wounds, you bleed on the people who don't hurt you. 
So my interaction with you is going to be based on how my interaction on another public platform has been. If my talk, say, at 2 o'clock today went terrible, I am already coming with that preconceived notions that, you know what, people are not going to be open to shamanism. Oh, they are the people who listen to the, the Puranas. They are the ones the, with the Sanskrit shlokas. They will not like what I'm saying. I am already coming with that preconceived notion because the earlier group didn't, didn't receive me as well as I thought. So as a result, I am bleeding onto a group that didn't hurt me. And all of us do that at various points in our life till the time we become aware. So this ancient healing practice that I'm going to be talking about, I would go ahead and say that this is a very close parallel to Hinduism. If we want to trace back the origin of Hinduism, it becomes extremely difficult to do that. Hinduism actually is extremely old, as old as humanity itself. Remember the times when we used to worship lords to get fire, to get rains, to have a good harvest, because fundamentally we were agricultural economy. And with the coming of the agricultural economy, all the Tetis Karod Devi Devta, they gained a lot of significance in our life because one took care of this, the other governed another factor, and so on and so forth. Everything had to be in balance. That is one of the things that comes out to me in the video, the sense of balance, the sense of reciprocity. What we call in shamanism, I'll put the word down, is Aini, which means the right relationship. Now, my right relationship happens with this person sitting here and happens with these people outside of me. At times when I get upset with my sister, she stops and asks me, Didi, is it really me? And then I just smile and say, no, you know what? I just had a tough day. So she reflects that this I me is currently not internally balanced. I am not in right relationship with myself. And hence, I am getting angry on that kiddo because she's 10 years younger to me. She can take that. I don't get angry on clients because they are paying me. Therefore, this is the I need that the right relationship that that doctor perhaps did not even have an iota of doubt that this is how I am paying back and possibly even felt fortunate that he got a chance to pay it back and that old man survived. And the second I need, the second right relationship is people outside of us. Not this girl, not this woman here that I talk to and have thoughts with, but those people outside of us. How do I interact with those people that I stay with? As I think I also highlighted in the previous talk when we spoke about Gyanse Achranta, that it's very good to be spiritual. It's very good to be a healer. But guess what? Where is my healing tested the most? With the people who know my red buttons, not with any of you. I'm going to be very nice and pleasant to all of you. Even if you don't behave well with me, I'll still be nice and present. But when I go out of this talk, out of the room, I take it all out on my mother. Because that's who we are. That's who I am. My red buttons are known to the people closest to me. So if you look at it evolutionary, there were no red buttons to begin with. When we were Stone Age, uh, when we were the cave men and women, it was a very clearly defined role. A woman was a nurturer, which means she took care of home. A man was a provider, which means he went out and he hunted and got food. That kind of I need was well-established and well-defined. 
Now, if somebody is living in the jungle, which means it is the wild, you really have to be careful because there could be an animal coming from somewhere. And instead of you having him as food, he could have you as food. So the warning mechanism of fight and flight were essential elements to our existence. Or abhi kya hota hai? Abhi panic attack aa jata hai. Tiger ka hai, dikhao. Where is the cheetah? But the body's nervous system goes into a panic attack, which means it goes into a fight, flight, or freeze. It never happened way back then because people did not have the time to have a panic attack. You had to run. You had a milli, milli second to decide if you are going to fight this beast or are you going to save your life by running from it. As a result, we never stored anything in the body. It was a natural discharge that would happen. Now that kind of right relationship also led to if somebody's seen the life of Pi, otherwise we all know that we belong to that community, that religion. When I say religion, I mean the Indian culture, wherein when you look at it in the life of Pi movie, when he kills a fish, he apologizes to the fish and he's thankful to the fish for coming or thankful actually to Lord Vishnu for coming as fish so that he could have food. This is exactly how we lived in the Stone Age as cave men and women. We were in such irony with the outside world and the inside that we knew that trees are there for their existence, but if need be, they will help us. Like the doctor when grew up to be this, this doctor man, this boy helped the old man. Similarly, when we needed food, we could kill an animal, not with aggression, not with anger, but as necessity. We knew precisely those plants that are beneficial for us. We did not need a Dolo 650, which has become India's replacement of nutrients. We would just go to the jungle, pick that leaf up, say our thank you, get it and eat that or make a concoction out of it and we would know we would get fine. We were also aware of the leaves of the plants that were poisonous. We knew that poison had nothing to do with us. That poison was an indication of self-preservation for that plant. This was the relationship we had. And then came the agricultural economy. After that came the technology. Then came the IT. We are all over Zoom. This is the progress or this is the, the evolution, if I can call it evolution, of the society that we are all in. So shamanism takes us actually back to the roots. It takes us back to that right relationship with nature. Something that people all say a lot of times is with the new age, we have to ascend. We got to become light. We talk about the light workers. We talk about the new age. We talk about the coming of the golden age or the Satyuga. People are talking about levitating themselves in order to become greater human beings so that the earth can transform. The current prale transformation that we are having is also an attempt to do that. Shamanism holds a different belief. Shamanism holds a belief of being the tree. As you have a tree, if you have a tree right in, in, in your courtyard or in a park around you, in the evening when you go there, just look at the tree. The tree is a perfect symbol of shamanism because the roots of the tree go deep into the ground, which means for me to ascend, I first have to belong here on earth. I have to descend 
and be an earth child before I can call myself a star child. So this descent is something that is beautifully offered by the tree. And then when you see the tree up, you go like, oh my God, look at the branches, look at the color of the leaves and the brown dried leaves also at times just stick to the tree itself. I was in Dehradun a couple of weeks ago for work and it's the season of lychee. So lychee is still ripening. Now in the, on those trees, there are these green lychees. There are the green to yellow to red lychees. And then there are these lot of green leaves supporting the ripening of lychees. But along with them, there are also brown leaves that are still sticky. And when the time comes, they just fall off. This is exactly what shamanism does. Shamanism believes in the soul that each and every interaction being or thing brings. So if your car is not working before you abuse it or even take it to the service station, how about having a conversation with the car? Because shamanism comes from the word animism, which is basically the animalistic tradition saying anima. Anima, which means the soul. Soul, which means breath. So each and everything, even the specs that I'm wearing is actually alive. And because of this essence of being alive, it has the potential to guide me. And honestly, the first book that I read, which actually told me the living essence of non-living things was Autobiography of a Yogi, Paramhansa Yogananda Ji. He explains it so beautifully. For me, he was the first guy that I read who combined science and spirituality so beautifully well. It has been a confusion of my life, honestly, till shamanism came in. I did not know where do these two meet. I did not know, okay, should I be scientific? I'm a science student. I'm a bio student. I always wanted to be a doctor. I believe in logic. But, you know, there are experiences that I have had that my mind cannot comprehend. Where do I go? What do I do? Being a black and white person, I did not know which way do I belong. But now with shamanism, I know that I belong to both. Because as I'm growing up, as I'm aging, I'm realizing that life is actually gray. It is not black and white. As a child, my parents needed me to understand. So they said, do you like this? Do you not like this? Beta, this is good and this is bad. Or oh, this is a truth, this is a lie. As I'm growing, I'm realizing there is no truth in life. There is no right or wrong. There is no good or bad. One information that I give you in a story makes a good story bad. The hero dying in the end of a Hindi story makes it madaniya. And the triumph of the hero in a Tollywood story makes us come out of the movie saying, what a movie. So we all go for those things of pleasure. And those things of pleasure are easily attainable with being in right relationship, coming back to the I need. My, my relationship with shamanism actually started about 10 years ago now when I had a free weekend and a friend of mine was doing a course for just a small amount of money. And I said, okay, chalte, dekh lete. Kuch nahi kar rahi hu, das ghande ka course hai, kya farak padta hai? Let me just go. And remember, I was a very left brain, logical person, a science background, psychologist, MBA, worked in the corporate world, uh, doing coaching and corporate training. I went to that workshop and two days later, I, when I came back, I was the same person. Uh, they kept the WhatsApp group on for a while, whatever groups we had at that point in time. And we kept exchanging the meditation of shamanism, which is called a journey. We will do a journey towards the end of the session today. 
And one of the girls reached out to me of the group. I didn't know anything about her. I hadn't even noticed her in those two days, actually, honestly speaking, though it was a small group. And she reached out to me and she said, just, I have to, these two questions. Can you do a shamanic journey for me and find out? And I, in my mind said, you know what? These things don't work. But now that you're asking for it, let me just do it. So I wrote to her, sure, I will do it and write back to you. And I said, in the meantime, I have a few questions. Could you do a journey for me? Now that's where the flip happened. When I told her the answers of what I got, she was like, this is exactly what my situation in life is. And I was like, it's not possible. When she gave me the answers to my questions, I was in equal awe and shock. I was like, how is it even possible? This girl doesn't know me. She's got everything right, bang on. It is a six sigma precision that happened with that journey for both of us. And then I kept it on the side. Now I don't disbelieve it, obviously, because I've seen proof of that. The biggest proof of anything is experience. I have experienced it. So I don't disregard it anymore. But I keep it on the side because I have my money easily coming through the corporate workshops. I just have to go stand for nine hours, entertain them, make them learn, make them play games, show them videos share a few stories. I am done. I get a handsome amount of money. I am very happy right now. And then as life progressed, I could feel that there was something in life that was beyond the mental and the, and the psychological aspect, the emotional aspect. Hema was the, the student of the first batch of shamanism that I held uh, two years ago. Uh, when I started to teach shamanism, which in itself is a story of how this ancient healing practice came about as a part of my life. It was, it was a group of wonderful people like Hema. Uh, and one person just said, oh, just is the one who knows about shamanism. Uh, yes, I know about shamanism, but I am not sure if I believe in it completely. Now what do I do? And you know those moments in life when life chooses you? Those people who come to your life and you don't go to them. You know those moments, what I'm talking about? That's what happened with me with shamanism. And it became my, in Hindi, you say, takiya kalam. My takiya kalam became that shamanism chooses you. You don't choose shamanism. Because it just chose me. And two and a half, three years later, I am teaching batches. There are all kinds of healings that are coming in. Uh, which range from generational curses to property issues, to relationships issues, to diseases, to all the diseases that we are prone to as a result of the family that we are born into, the genetics aspect of it. But that's not, that's not the scope of today, so I will not get in there. But it's just been a blessed, humbling journey to be able to practice this healing modality, which is, by the way, still extremely prevalent in the tribes of India. Shamanism has gained popularity because of the US of A. A few philanthropists, anthropologists, psychologists went to the South of America and they wanted to figure out what are these guys doing that they are staying so healthy. It all started with a simple quest what are people in the suburbs doing that they don't have cancer, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, arthritis? Why is the West so crippled by these five diseases that the South of America does not have? And this simple question led to a lot of anthropologists and even doctors do a recce, do a trip to the South of America to see what was happening. And guess what did they find? Something that I've been telling you from the time I've come on, they found that people in the jungle are in Aini with everything around, within and without. And that is why 
they did not have that. Of course, they don't have adulterated food. They don't have the UV rays. They don't have pollution. Yes, everything makes a difference. Cannot negate those factors. But fundamentally, they are still attached to the roots. The five elements that make us, when we do a havan at home, we have the five elements present. We have the fire, we have the earth, we have the water. All these elements, when they come together, is when we see we have cleansed the house. Now you can do the Gri Pravesh. Because they are the essence of the various directions that we have. Even Vastu goes by those directions. And this is across religion. If you, uh, there has been done about Prima facie, it may look like, what are you saying? You are saying that Hinduism is a close parallel to shamanism. And now you are telling us that Islam and shamanism are also same. Exactly. Because everything kind of originated from this single drop and then begin to form branches. You and I are one family. If we trace the ancestral lineage, my parents, their parents, their parents, their parents, and similarly from your side, 856 generations before we were one family. That's how we came about because propagation of species is so important for humanity that it seems like, oh, Rauji, I'm getting the first time. It feels good to you. But what feels good to you actually goes back to eons, not to this moment here. So that essence of working with the elements, the essence of working with the directions, and working with nature as is, is what comes as a package of shamanism. If you remember, there is something that I said in the previous, the first talk that I did, which actually um, sparked quite a bit of interest. And that sentence which I said was, I don't have a body, I am the body. And I will give you a little context to that in under a minute, which is that I always have ignored my body because I never saw my mom taking care of her body. So monkey see, monkey do, child see, child do. Simple logic. I saw mom never took care of her body. I thought body wasn't important. I didn't take care of her. When I, take care, I didn't take care of my body. When I got into meditation, body is a vehicle, body is a tool. I have a body, take care of it. That's the only temple you have to stay in. Bus, uske beyond body pe zada dhyan nahi dene ka. That's it. When I came into shamanism and simultaneously started to explore uh, other work related to the body, I realized, no, I don't have a body. I am this body. When I say that I have this nervousness and I have something happening here, this is me. It is a part of who I am. How can I just say that I have a body? I am the body. Where does the mind reside? The mind does not reside here. The mind is actually a sheath all over the body, inside the physical body, of course, what we call as the Gyanamaya Kosha, the Manomaya Kosha. The Manomaya Kosha and the Gyanamaya Kosha is a Kosha. It's a sheath that we have around the soul, our soul, which has come in. We have a sheath of the bliss sheath, the Anandamaya Kosha. Then we have the Gyanamaya Kosha. And that is why they say the closest way to enlightenment is through the intellect. That's what Jiddu Krishnamurti promoted. Because the intellect body is closest to the soul. And then we have the Manomaya Kosha. Then we have the Andamaya Kosha. And we have the Pranamaya Kosha. So it's a Kosha. The mind is not here. The mind is throughout the body. So tell me, how am I only the soul? I am this entire package that come in. Because my samskara, 
got me to the family that I'm born in. My samskara decided my fate for me. And my samskara it actually decided the earlier part of the results of my karma. The rest of it, I do, you know, as I sow, I reap. But there was something to begin with. This is what we begin to deep dive into with shamanism. Now let's put a neuroscience perspective in that. But before that, is it becoming too much? Is it becoming dry? Do I need to get you guys up and get a little, go and do a little activity? Not at all, Jess. This is <laughs> wonderful. We are listening. We are intently listening to it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. That's wonderful. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Armaitiji, do you want to say something? You unmuted yourself. No, I'd say I wanted to say the same thing that we are really enjoying it. So just carry on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. It's always good to have midterm feedback. Okay, so where was I? Neuroscience. Now, this is all shamanism and ancient healing practice, the elements, the directions, the mystical, metaphysical, spiritual aspect of it. What is it in terms of my body? The fundamental genes of the body is defined by the DNA. We all know that. That is how it is actually proved that I am my parent's daughter. If we do a DNA testing, the DNA testing will match with my parent's DNA. Correct? That's, that's the scientific proof of being their daughter. Apart from, the uh, apart from the fact that I fight with them all the time, the medical aspect is when the DNA tests match, I am their daughter. Now, the DNA is actually of two kinds, not of one kind. One is the DNA, which is called as the nuclear DNA. The second DNA is coming from mitochondria. This fellow has an interesting name and an even interesting profession. The job description of a mitochondria is the energy that I am speaking with right now is coming from mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of a cell. So the cells that we have, the cell is supposed to have the nucleus, electron, proton, neutron. I will not bore you with that a lot. The cell has also has a lot of empty space. Actually, it is considered that the cell is mostly empty. Now, in that empty cell, there is also a small, a super small, super, super small organ called the mitochondria, which is our powerhouse. And do you know what is the beauty of mitochondria? You can only inherit your mitochondria from your mother. You cannot get the mitochondria from your father. So your energy levels, your vision, your hearing, the sugar levels, the heart problems are most likely coming from the mother's side and not from the father's side because you did not inherit that. Science, by the way, is still figuring out why. And the only logic that they have come to so far is that when the fusion of the sperm and the egg happens, the sperm has to make so much of effort that it begins to self-destroy itself. Now, this is what the science knows as of now. As we progress, it will change. Now, this mitochondria is responsible for producing energy in the body. This is responsible for producing the heat production, keeping the heat of the body neutral. It's responsible for cell death, which means when the time is over, the cell is supposed to die and a new cell is supposed to be born. This is the duty of mitochondria. And what happens if the cell doesn't die? Cancer, exactly. What is cancer? Cancer, according to shamanism, is chaos in the body. Lack of order, 
is how shamans define cancer. And that happens because the mitochondria is not doing the work efficiently. Therefore, the production of the cell and the dying of the cell, regulation of the temperature, which is homeostasis, and energy, these are fundamentally the three functions of mitochondria. And we get that from our mother. Where did our mother get it from? Her mother. Where did her mother get it from? Her mother. So it's the maternal lineage that is being formed. And can you now see what I said 10 minutes ago that all of us have the same parent eventually? Because eventually when you keep tracing back, there is going to be a single woman who passed her mitochondria on and that kept going on and perpetuating to reach to the 7.2 billion people that we are today. Now, this mitochondria, which is the energy body of the cell, is defining how we are going to be. Which means that if my mitochondria is in great health, I can almost, with certainty, sign up for longevity in my life. I will have a long, healthy life if my mitochondria is good. And that is precisely why Ayurveda would talk about fixed meals at fixed points in time, eating less, having all the six flavors in your thali, which now the Westerners have taken it and call it, oh, you know what? I am on intermittent fasting right now. What is intermittent fasting? Intermittent fasting is Ayurvedic way of living. That is what is intermittent fasting. The idea of intermittent fasting Ayurveda is that the mitochondria gets time to repair itself. And when mitochondria gets the time to repair itself, you have more energy. The cell dies on time, which means new cells are born on time. The diabetes get reversed. The temperature of the body comes to a normal natural homeostasis and you have energy even as you age. Have you met those 70 plus year old people who are so enthusiastic and up there? Forget everybody else. Look at God uncle. Oh my God. He must be about 70 for sure, right? Look at his energy. It's a spiritual essence. There is no doubt about it. But there is something else also which is happening. It's a holistic way of life that is making him who he is. And that is making him go on as well. Now with the mitochondria coming in, with this growth and movement and homeostasis happening in the body, the cells begin to generate and pass on information. Do you know that eye cells die in 48 hours? So, Logically speaking, my eye cells that I have at 527 on the 31st of May should die on June 2nd at 527, which means today I'm wearing specs. Two days later, when I see you, I should not be wearing specs. Does it happen? No, because the mitochondria is so smart. Mumbai ki bhasha mein wo itna shana hai that when it dies, it passes the legacy. Virasat mein kya deke jata hai? Virasat mein deke jata hai ki yaad rakhna just ka 3.5 number hai. And that is what is written in the will and passed on to the next cells that come in. And hence, my specs today remain my specs day after tomorrow as well. I don't lose that. Now, when I exercise, I get LASIK done. Of course, it corrects itself and new cells begin to inform in a different way. That is energy healing. That is healing which, because this software, which is outside of me, my auric body, begins to inform my physical body. When I say I don't feel good here, it's my space informing my body that it is not good to be in this space. I think somebody had a fight in this place. You know what? I don't like this temple much. The other temple has good energy. No, no. How can you say that? All temples are the same. No, 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 no. I'm telling you that temple is better. So because this software of mine 
begins to inform me at some level. And all of us have that. When we meet somebody, we feel very good. There are people who are genuinely good and we don't feel very good meeting them. So it's all based on this energy interaction that I'm having with, with people. Now, this mitochondria, which is informing, is having a certain memory, which is still debatable in the scientific world, by the way. Now, this empty spaces in the cell and mitochondria combined together is passing the information on from one to the other. So the only way that you can inform mitochondria is by a change of lifestyle, which means either you change your energy or you change your thought patterns or you change your nutrition. When you do these things, the mitochondria is informed differently. And that's how we do not repeat the genetic diseases that we are born into. Now, the shamans of the Western world began to combine this knowledge with the ancient shamanic knowledge. And then they said, okay, wait, this is what mitochondria does. It is coming from the mother. This is what energy healing does. How can I bring them together? And can I provide now a holistic plan which takes care of people and which takes care of their fate, which can now be defined as destiny. There is a joke that we do as shamans, which is that fate is fatal. So you don't want to grip, fall into the grip of the fate. You want to be someone who can craft the destiny of their life because fate is fatal. So how do we do that is one of the ways, obviously, is by changing lifestyle by just making different decisions. We say that in psychology. I'm sorry because my discipline is like this. I keep bringing in aspects from wherever, whatever get I get reminded of because it's not a planned talk. It's impromptu. So in psychology, we say that if you do what you've always done, you will get what you've always got. So if I want a different result, guess what? I have to do something different. If I want to get up at five o'clock in the morning, I can't be sleeping at one. And then complaining that, see, I put an alarm for five o'clock. I could not get up at five. My body, oh my God, what do I do? I must push myself to get come out of the bed. No, darling, you must get to bed at 10 o'clock if you want to get at five o'clock. That's all that you need to do. You don't need to push yourself. Stop pushing yourself for things. If we are in I need, things come to us. And I realized that is the essence of ontology. That is the essence of being. When people say, oh, just be, I could never understand that. What do you mean by just be? Kuch nahi karo, kya? Free bed jo, kya? Is this just be? Okay, I'm just being, but nothing's happening now. You said just be. And then I started to explore what is just being. And it meant, okay, just be the magnet of good things. How about that as being? Because I've struggled so hard in my life, I've called myself a donkey so many times. Like a donkey, I keep working. That's my hard work. That's my level of hard work. I can go on and on and on and on. Now, how about being the magnet of good things? that I am this magnet that good things just come to me. And of course I make the efforts. It, it's the joke of, well, most of you know the joke. It's very cliched. I will still say that it's, you know, one person goes to God and uh, says uh, that, you know, um, I want to win a lottery and God says, okay. And he keeps saying, I want to win a lottery. I want to win a lottery. I want to win a lottery. And then starts complaining to God. God, I didn't win a lottery. I didn't win a lottery. I didn't win a lottery. He used to go to the temple every day and say, I didn't win a lottery. I didn't win a lottery. One day God came down and he said, you know what, dude, please buy a ticket first. Winning and losing is decided by the game you choose to play. If you sit in the audience, you can only cheer the players. You don't win, you don't lose. We did not lose Gujarat or, or, or we did not win Gujarat or lose Rajasthan in the IPL. No, we did not. We were just cheering on, wasting four hours on screen. Well, could be 
pleasure for uh, for leisure and pleasure for few people but that's what we were doing so if we just come into the essence of internal relationship and external relationship we would begin to see that things would would shape up differently hema is a testimonial to that i'm a testimonial to that and there's so many other people who uh, would vouch for it i am sure you have seen that change i remember the first day god uncle started this class i remember i was a part of that class when that happened that tuesday 4:30 gathering i was a part of the next class as well if you see yourself in this journey of two years you would see that there is ease that has come in in various areas of life that essence which was missing has started to come in and that's the power of purity it's like you know when you it's like when you go to a temple when you go to a mosque you go to a gurdwara you do this what is this ye jo pak dharti hai is pak dharti ka agar mujhe ek speck bhi mil gaya to main bhi pak ho jaungi this is what it is what do we why do we do this touch the floor and touch it to the, to the forehead because we are looking at that purity to come to us that sense of piousness to dawn in so that we make better decisions what is opening up for you i am aware that we are at 536 i want you to go through a journey as well before i do that i want to hear how has this hour been for you what is your feedback what are you taking back and then we will go for a shamanic five seven minute shamanic journey hema do you think that's a good idea okay perfect yes yes but i think we can increase the journey for to 10 15 minutes let the people have the experience of <laughs> okay we so please that. please come forward to share uh, anyone you can unmute yourself i'll pin you anyone yes ritu please come in just your talk was wonderful i really enjoyed each and everything about it just absolutely everything it was so good but i could not understand shamanic journey what is it about <laughs> that thing i could not understand maybe so, i don't know maybe other people must have understood but somehow with my limited uh, intellect i could not understand i mean i will i am readily open to go for a shamanic journey right now but i am not from this entire conversation i could not get the glimpse of what we will be going okay that i will tell you what is it yeah that i will tell you yeah. yeah so let's hear a few other people and i will answer your question i hope uh, just that uh, when we start feeling that everything which is available here in the world as you said your spec or anything whatever you are using and if you are using it uh, as they are all live that is what someone is i mean uh, everything becomes live in your life uh, they say that uh, gautam buddha uh, once he was coming from a plane he uh, shut the door then he said i am sorry and came back almost a kilometer and a half back and prayed the door that i am sorry that i shut you in a bad way so everything when you feel that it is a part of your uh, own soul then most of that is coming this is what i understood Okay. Yeah, that's a good understanding. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Garchi. Let's just have um, no question. more shares. Yeah. No more shares. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me just summarize it for you. I think that will make it better. Okay. So shamanism is a healing. and guidance modality coming from the essence of everything carries a spirit 
therefore everything can guide us so if you go to this tree after the talk just put your hands on that bark of the trunk of the tree and stay with that that in itself is healing because that tree is an expression of divinity and so is this gadget here when we walk into the temple what defines the boundary of the temple makes it sacred so we can make anything sacred and then anything can become the temple the third aspect is that about aini that shamanism can simply be taken as when you are in aini which is when you are in the right relationship not the perfect the right relationship with yourself which means apne mein shant puran sambhav and similarly with everybody around you whether it's nature whether it's animals whether it's human beings or gadgets when nothing can disturb me any more as gautam bud said that is the essence of shamanism we work with the elements with the directions we work with the spirit guides and something what we call as power animals in shamanism so it's absolutely vast but to take back something today it is about the soul that resides in everything and hence everything is divine or can be made divine when people work with the crystals people work with the tarot cards people work as healers what happens in there is that they they are made divine for that point in time and that's why the essence comes through so that way is begin to work with the elements of nature whether it's the leaves the stones the trees the flowers whatever it may be ritu ji does that give you an idea an idea see what i understood of it each and everything living non living animate inanimate that can become your guide that absolutely. is what it means shaman is absolutely absolutely, absolutely. Okay. so shaman is someone who is considered to be a person who can see in the dark it's a it's it's a it's a siberian word which means the one who can see in the dark it is also coming from a sanskrit word which is now the new research which is happening coming from shaman which means the one who knows so a shaman is an individual that can see beyond the obvious right and one of the ways of seeing beyond the obvious is when you come into aini so one word if you take back from here that word that word is aini coming in right relationship within and without okay okay so the meditation of shamanism is called as a journey it's an active it's very different from meditation it's actually an active process wherein we actually invite people to imagine so there are a lot of people who would say i can't see anything i don't know what is happening well it doesn't matter just imagine remember that this is an empty canvas and you are a child you just go play and enjoy yourself now one of the essential elements that we work in shamanism is that of a power essence that comes in the form of an animal so there are certain characteristics or qualities that we may either have or we may need in life and because of that shamanism believes that the the essence of those qualities appear to us in the form of an animal now this is an again a parallel that i would like to draw with hinduism if you look at all the hindu gods they have their vahan which is an animal which rightly defines the characteristics as unique to the animal and as complementary to that god or goddess as well whether it is mata ka sher shiv ki nandi ya shiv ke saap or the crow that belongs to shani maharaj whatever it may be all these they bring in the essence of that 
So I would invite you today to go on a journey which I will be guiding you. And in that journey, we will be traveling. I will take you through my voice to that domain. It actually happens in the four to seven hertz frequency. And I want you to meet one of your power animals. And when you meet it, I will keep guiding you. It's like, what is the set of characteristics that are there in your life or that you require? Based on that, the characteristics will take the shape of an animal. That's it. It's all, all of that is in the spirit form. But it takes the shape as per our understanding and what we are comfortable with. So there is absolutely nothing to be wary of. We are all protected. We are all taken care of. We will do a short journey to speak to our power animal just for, for us to get an essence of what that is. And then you can later on check about that power animal to see if it makes sense and share with us your experiences the next time possibly. So what I want you to do is uh, if you want to visit the loo, if you want to have water, we could give you a minute, two minutes to do that. And when you come back, you can either lie down or sit up. Important thing is to keep your hands and legs open. Don't cross them like this. Keep them open. That's it. Take your specs off and just lie down. Listen to me. So I'm going to be giving you a minute before that in case you want to go to the washroom or have water. Or is everybody here and ready? No break required? Wow. I like the resilience of the group. Okay, so let's have you just settle in. Yeah, have water. Relax yourself a little bit. You can comfortably sit in the chair or lie down. And as you do that, when we started the talk, we spoke about the power of intent. You can put a clear intent out to meet the essence of those characteristics in the form of a power animal for yourself. And as you do that, just relax yourself more and more. Closing your eyes as soon as you wish. And imagine that you are in this beautiful garden. It's full springtime. The flowers are blooming. Pay attention to your feet. And if you're wearing a footwear, just imagine that you take those footwear off and just walk on that grass. That little moist the active dew grass. really absorbing the place where you are in. Just 
you may see a lot of greenery a lot of different colors see what time of the day is it do you see clouds is it sunny is it twilight do you see any birds just get yourself familiar to this garden that you are in involving all your senses in hearing you may hear the birds chirp you may hear the quail sing are there any trees there do they have roots look for that one tree that calls out to you there is a tree somewhere in the garden that may attract you towards it start to walk towards that tree and when you reach there just sit in the shade of that tree with your back touching the trunk of the tree just make yourself comfortable experiencing the vastness and the stillness of this moment with your back touching the trunk of this all giving tree imagine that you are merging with this tree becoming one with it and as you merge you take on this journey to the roots of the tree into the soil bed appearing in a world which is different a different landscape different flowers and trees and as my voice continues to guide you just look around 
you may see an animal coming towards you. You may see an animal peeping from behind a tree. It could be a bird. It could be a domesticated animal or a wild animal. But the beauty is that you will not feel scared. You feel peaceful. And you greet this animal with same love as it treats you. If you get a sense of it and don't really see it, that's okay too. As I said, go ahead and imagine. Now with you face to face with this powerful animal, let's have a little conversation. Remember the divine essence everything carries so in your own language of non-verbal expression or verbally ask the animal what is a message for me what do i need to do what do I need to know at this point? Ask it, how will you help me with my life's journey? Ask it if it has any other message for you. It may give you a gift. It may say something to you. Remember to remember it. And with the essence of the message, the interaction, convey your thanks to that power animal to the essence that you met and interacted. And begin to journey back from that world to the soil bed up to the roots of the tree. Being beneath that tree with your back touching the trunk.
staying in the shade of the tree for just a couple of moments more. Just paying your gratitude to that tree, giving it your love. Getting up and beginning to walk back through that freshly moist grass. Appreciating the beauty, the trees, the flowers, the birds, the greens. Leaving that beautiful garden for now. And coming back to this body. Becoming aware of your fingers and toes. Becoming aware of the top of your head. of your nose, becoming aware of the other sounds apart from my voice. Orienting yourself to the here and now and opening your eyes. How do you feel? How many of you actually met an animal, saw the image of an animal? Just give me your hand, show of hands. Okay, okay, wonderful. Now, it'll be a good idea for you to search that up on Google. How to search it up? For example, if you saw a peacock, do peacock spirit animal or power animal. I will write this here, spirit animal or power animal. Just write that animal's name and just write either of these two words, either power animal or spirit animal and read up on that and see if you connect with it. And when we meet next, we will keep a little while for sharing about uh, what happened. How did you connect to this power animal? And so if I saw a peacock, peacock power animal, cheetah, cheetah power animal, and just see what it means to you and see if there is a parallel of what came to you and what's happening in your life. If there is any resonance there. Any last thoughts to share on this group with us here? The meditation it was very peaceful. The meditation uh, uh, it just took me into a very deep state of calm. I did feel like opening my eyes. <laughs> I didn't feel like coming back. It was very very peaceful. Somewhere deep within. It's very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. And hope hope I can share something. <laughs> about my spirit animal. Thank you. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jess. We simply enjoyed it. And I hope uh, something will come through for us through this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arvati. Thank you. Hello. Yes, Vijay Ji. Hello. Yeah. आपके हाथ और पैर क्यों खुल रहे हैं? Open, not cross. Why? Okay. Uh, are you asking that? ऐसा क्यों करना है? हाँ, yes, yes. Okay. 
क्योंकि इसमें हम क्या कर रहे हैं कि हम वो फोर से सेवन हर्ट्स की फ्रीक्वेंसी में जा रहे हैं तो हम नहीं चाहते कि हमारे पास कुछ आके ट्रैप हो जाए अगर हम ऐसे रखते हैं तो जो एनर्जी आती है वो एनर्जी चली भी जाती है तो वी ओनली वॉट द गुड एनर्जी टू स्टे इसलिए हम इसको ओपन रखते हैं ताकि हमारा एनर्जी सर्किट ओपन रहे जब हम मेडिटेशन करते हैं तो हम एनर्जी सर्किट क्लोज करते हैं क्योंकि हमारी सारी जो एनर्जी है वो अंदर ऊर्जा बढ़ाए इसमें हम खोलते हैं ताकि जो एनर्जी हमारी काम की नहीं है वो वापस नेचर में चली जाए और जो काम की है सिर्फ वो अंदर आए जस्ट बहुत बहुत ज्यादा अच्छा लगा योर मेडिटेशन वॉज रियली रियली वेरी कामिंग एंड वेरी पीसफुल एंड आफ्टर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम आई हैड दिस यू नो आई हैड अ वेरी गुड फीलिंग अबाउट इट That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, my G. G. So, any more sharing? Anyone else wants to come in? Okay, just so. Ah, uh, Lakshmi G. Yes, Lakshmi, ma'am, come in. I joined quite late because I was caught up with something. So sorry, I feel for that. But the little that I spent time with you was just wonderful, and I had some uh, some idea about shamanism. But I realized that I'm practicing so many so much of it even without realizing that it was shamanism. That's one part. Today's experience when you said think of your power animal, I started with an elephant. because i very often see visions of an elephant the eye of the elephant the face of the elephant you know often that happens but once i got into the meditation i read somewhere else and it was a rabbit oh, wow. just to explain to you the logical mind was looking for the elephant but here the travel took me to maybe the real uh, power that i really have you know maybe it's going to reveal something Yeah. That is a little strange, I think. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Thank say the last you. bit again. Thank you so much. Beg your pardon. Just say the last bit again. I didn't get it. Your voice is breaking. Oh, okay. Is it better now? Much, much better. Yes. Okay. I was saying that I started with a logical mind and my past experiences of having seen and the having had visions of an elephant. and especially i and the face of the elephant more than the entire body but i thought that's what is going to come in my meditation it was nowhere in the picture and floating with your instructions your guidance i landed underground and landed in the of course i don't know whether you want me to share this at the moment please, please. i thought of alice in wonderland and uh, landed there underground into a beautiful world and the only animal i could see was the rabbit nothing yeah. else you know yeah. so it was just cut off from the logical mental state mental thought it's state yeah. i'll connect and try and understand what that power animal means to my life sure sure yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you. thank you so much thank, thank you. you so much thank you thank you thank you and you are right you know the logical mind takes us in one direction the mystical realm is very different it will take us where we are supposed to be and we don't even have we don't have only one power animal we are actually born with four power animals so there is a chance that you have elephant for sure but what do you need at this point in time because our intention was what do i need at this point in time so as per that need the rabbit came up so it be very interesting for you to see the rabbit spirit animal and the elephant spirit of power animal and then see you know the pallas that come in possibly you have both of them that's why so yes it's very interesting and lot of us are practicing shamanism in our own way because it's such an ancient thing that we have done it somewhere for sure you know one of the things that my participants tell me the most common experience that people have with shamanism is i have come home this feels 
home. So it's a journey back to yourself. Ritu, another way of defining shamanism, a mystical way of defining it. It's a journey back to yourself. Just exactly, that's what I was feeling in this very short meditation. That's what I felt. Yeah. So, yeah, all my doubts are cleared now. Thank you. Yes, Himachi. Okay, so... Shall we close the meeting? Thank okay. you so much, everyone. Thank you. Really beautiful to be in this space. Always. Thank you. Most so welcome. Fun. We will keep on calling you. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. Thank you, everyone present here. So we will close. Oh. Sahana Vavatu. Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvina Vadhita Mastu Ma Vidu Vishavahai Shantihi 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 Thank you, everyone. We meet next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.